Are you looking at your blood tests and wondering what's going on with your iron saturation? Maybe you see really high levels and you're worried that you might have some kind of chronic health issue that's leading to high iron saturation. My name is Dr. Taranella, and in this video, we're going to look at the cause of high iron saturation. There's actually several causes of high iron saturation. We're going to look at four common causes for this, some genetic things that may be influencing it, diet etc. So again, my name is Dr. Taranella, and if you're new to this channel, I just want you to know that I make these videos to help you go beyond the basics of your health, whether it's a confusing lab test, symptom, or diagnosis, making these videos to help you get a better understanding of what's going on with your health. So if you like this kind of information on nutrition, hormones, overall health optimization, click on the like button and don't forget to subscribe to the channel to get more videos like this one. Now for a quick disclaim, the information contained in this video is for informational purposes only. It's not intended as treatment for any medical condition or a substitute for seeing an actual doctor or medical professional. It should be used as an educational guide to deepen your understanding of your own health and treatment success. If medical attention is needed, don't delay in seeking that attention. All right, let's look at the cause of high iron saturation. So in this video, we want to look at the cause of high iron saturation. And as you may know, the cause of high iron saturation is more than just hemochromatosis. There are other causes of high iron saturation. But before we talk about the causes and its importance, we first want to look at this question, what is iron saturation to begin with. What are we talking about here? So iron is carried around in our bodies via transport proteins. Now, there's many steps involved in the absorption of iron, but once the iron is absorbed into the bloodstream, it's going to bind to a carrier protein called transferrin. Transferrin transports the iron throughout the body, delivering it to specific cells that require iron for its function, like bone marrow, for instance, that require iron to make red blood cells, but also other areas that may just be a little bit deficient in iron for whatever reason. So when we talk about what is the cause of high iron saturation, what we're referring to is the saturation of this binding protein, transferrin. There's only so much transferrin protein that our bodies make and that's floating around in your blood. So with this, there's only so much binding capacity that those transferrin molecules have. So a high saturation means that there's not much binding capacity for the transferrin left. Why does this happen? Well, either there's too much iron coming in through the digestive tract or too much in the system in general from other sources, which we'll discuss in just a minute, or perhaps there's too little transferrin being made as well, and therefore the transferrin saturation is high. So let's look at some of the classic examples examples or common reasons for high transferrin. So when looking at the cause for high transferrin, hemochromatosis is definitely one of those things that's going to be high on your list, something that you're going to want to rule out for sure. So what is hemochromatosis to begin with? So it's a genetic disorder characterized by excessive absorption and accumulation of iron in the body. The primary cause for hemochromatosis is genetic alteration or mutation in specific genes that are controlling iron metabolism and more so absorption. The most common of these mutations in hereditary hemochromatosis is caused by mutations in the HFP gene, specifically the C282Y and the H63D. Alterations here lead to disruption of the normal regulatory process of iron absorption that's somewhat regulated by the HFE protein. The HFE protein interacts with transferrin in the body and then goes on to signal to the liver how much hepcidin to make. So what is hepcidin? Well, hepcidin acts in the intestines and other places to reduce the amount of iron absorption into the body. So when transferrin is elevated, the HFE should tell the liver to produce more hepcidin, thereby reducing the absorption of iron in the intestines. However, with hemochromatosis and other liver conditions, this process is not working properly and you end up with not enough hepcidin levels. They don't go up. And so the iron absorption continues even in the presence of a high iron saturation. So in looking at the cause of high iron saturation, this is an important one. The second one, though, has to do more with iron overload disorders. And these are conditions such as thalassemia or sideroblastic anemia. 
and other conditions where the red blood cells are misshapen and it leads to a higher turnover of those red blood cells. So what ends up happening with that higher turnover is those red blood cells are being broken down at a higher frequency, leading to higher internal iron that that transferrin protein needs to then go grab those extra iron molecules. Otherwise, you end up with the iron running into and damaging other cells and tissues. So that's the second common cause for high iron saturation. The third one has to do more with liver disease. Pretty much any liver condition, if it goes on chronically and you have ongoing elevation in liver enzymes, it, it can be the cause for high iron saturation. And there's a couple ways that that happens. One is through dysregulation of hepcidin production. So we said that hepcidin normally is produced by the liver and it regulates the amount of iron absorption in the intestines and also how well it's distributed throughout the body. When there's dysfunction in the liver, those hepatocytes are not going to be able to produce the hepcidin in the right amounts. And that disruption can lead to increased absorption of iron from the intestines. And that leads to high iron saturation. The other thing with chronic liver problems is that when those liver cells are damaged, well, the liver is one of the primary spots where iron is stored. So each time those liver cells are damaged, you're releasing some of that iron. So depending on how much damage there is to the liver will determine how much iron is released. And as more iron is released, you get more saturation of the transferrin molecule. And that again leads to high iron saturation. The last one that I want to talk about is excess iron supplementation. Sometimes people are taking supplements with high iron in them. Unbeknownst to them, it's causing their ferritin levels to go way up and their iron saturation levels to go up as well. So again, sometimes people do that accidentally through a multivitamin, or they just think they need more iron and they're taking it without getting their levels checked and they end up with this problem. Other times it's just the consumption, the quantity of consumption of red meat. Red meat contains a high amount of iron and it's particularly really bioavailable iron. So when you're consuming red meat on a regular basis, say more than twice a week, this could also lead to high iron saturation. Still, I think we have to understand that while these are the most common reasons for high iron saturation and the more common scenarios, not everyone with high iron saturation is going to fit neatly and nicely into one of these four categories. Iron saturation can go up and down based on your diet leading up to the blood test that shows your high iron saturation. There's also a bunch of other genetic and other health variables that need to be taken into consideration too when you have high iron saturation. But what is the point of understanding high iron saturation anyways? Why is it really a problem or is it even a problem for your health? That's what we're going to discuss in the next video on this topic about iron and the problems that happen from too much iron. So how'd I do? Did that help you better understand the cause of high iron saturation? Hopefully it gives you a better understanding of this topic. If you do have follow-up questions, please drop them in the comment section. I'm happy to answer your question. We'll see you next time.